Although the first sharks appeared 450 million years ago, evidence suggests that hammerheads only appeared 20 million years ago. They are found in warm temperate and tropical waters of the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans and possess the characteristic hammer-shaped head, which is called a cephalofoil. As the name suggests, in the scalloped hammerhead shark, the head is scalloped shaped. The hammer-shaped head brings about some useful advantages for the shark. The wider the shark's head, the greater the extent of its binocular vision, which is known to enhance the perception of depth, and provides a larger area for the electroreceptors that the shark relies on for hunting prey on or under the sediment. Sharks can tell which nostril receives an odour first, and they will turn quickly in that direction. As hammerhead sharks have their nostrils far apart, they are particularly good at this. It is also thought to give them greater manoeuvrability and lift. Their diet ranges from schooling fish such as sardines, herrings and mackerel, to stingrays, squid and crustaceans. Pups are born live in shallow coastal areas after a gestation period of between 9 to 12 months and measure just 30 to 55 centimetres. Litter sizes can range from 12 to 40 pups. In November 2017, a scalloped hammerhead shark nursery was found in the mangroves along Santa Cruz Island. Once they have given birth, the female leaves the pups in this protected environment. Once they have grown for one or two years, they need more food, so they make their way to the open ocean and can travel for thousands of kilometres, growing as long as 3 metres and living for up to 50 years. Scientists have been gently capturing the pups so that they can measure and weigh it, determine its sex and insert a tracking chip in its back so its habits and migration routes can be logged. They have to do this very quickly as they need a constant water flow to breathe, so researchers only have two minutes to collect their data and tag them. They then have to move the baby shark through the water to get water flowing over it so as to revive the shark before they let it go. As well as tracking their migration routes, these kinds of studies have enabled scientists to see where these sharks are being caught when they leave the marine reserve and allow other countries to be notified so they can help protect them. Scalloped hammerhead sharks are very sociable animals and form huge schools of more than 200 individuals in locations such as Cocos Island and in the northern Galapagos archipelago. This behaviour allows males to easily locate and mate with the largest and fittest females in the school but it also makes them easy targets for fishing, both intentionally and as bycatch. In November 2018, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, announced that scalloped hammerhead sharks were now critically endangered. In some places around the world, populations have declined by as much as 90%, and this is due mostly to overfishing. So why are these creatures fish so remorselessly? Well, if you saw my video on whale sharks earlier this week, it will be no surprise to know that it is for the same reason as many other sharks, for their meat, and in particular to make shark fin soup. It has been estimated that as many as 100 million sharks a year may be slaughtered, many of which go towards making this delicacy, which is why many people were extremely concerned when the Ecuadorian Navy announced on the 16th of July that it had seen a fishing fleet of around 260 ships off the coast of the Galapagos Islands. They are mostly Chinese flagships and are in international waters, but only just outside the 188 mile wide exclusive economic zone around the island. The fishing vessels arrive every year, but this is the largest seen to date. A devious technique the fishermen use is to use bait to lure the sharks out of the equatorial waters to then catch them in the international waters. There are no laws regulating fishing in international waters, so there is little that the Ecuadorian government can do. But it has increased patrols to ensure that the ships do not venture into the Galapagos exclusive economic zone. Another measure being looked into is to extend the exclusive economic zone to a 350 mile circumference around the islands. This would then join up the Ecuadorian mainland's economic zone, closing off a corridor of international waters in between the two. And this is where the Chinese fleet is currently located. In my video on whale sharks, I mentioned Mission Blue Hope Spots, which are special places that are scientifically identified as critical to the health of the ocean. The migration route between the Galapagos Islands and the Cocos Islands, which are situated off the coast of Costa Rica, have been proposed to become a Mission Blue Hope Spot. Once an area receives recognition that it is a hope spot, management of the area can be strengthened with the aim of reducing illegal fishing activities and conserving fish stocks. 
In 2017, one Chinese vessel was actually found in the Galapagos National Park by one of the park's patrol ships. The vessel was then intercepted by a Navy helicopter and a Coast Guard boat about 40 miles northwest of the island of San Cristobal, an area which has the greatest abundance of sharks known in the world. The vessel was a mother ship which collected fish from smaller fishing boats. It was about 300 feet long with six cargo bays, several of which were completely full. Galapagos National Park rangers found thousands, if not tens of thousands, of sharks. There were in all 300 tonnes of fish. Most of the fish were scalloped hammerhead sharks, along with silky sharks and tuna. So this is why it is so serious that these fishing vessels have arrived off the coast of the Galapagos Islands. The Ecuadorian courts hand down stiff sentences for environmental crimes, and I am pleased that the captain and his officers were sentenced to three years in jail, and the owners of the ship were fined $6 million. 32 species of shark, such as the scalloped hammerheads, whale sharks, tiger sharks, and the Galapagos sharks, can be found in the waters of the Galapagos Islands, but the highest concentrations are found around Wolf and Darwin Islands, and it has been confirmed that it has the highest abundance of sharks in the world. In recognition of this, in 2016, Ecuador created a new marine sanctuary of around 15,000 square miles in the waters around Darwin and Wolf Islands. It is incorporated into the 80,000 square mile Galapagos Marine Reserve created in 1998. Crucially, no fishing will be allowed in the sanctuary, giving a safe haven for any fish species which congregate there. But if the scalloped hammerhead shark is not to become another name on the list of animals that humans have driven to extinction, then much more needs to be done. For example, scalloped hammerheads, along with the great hammerhead and the smooth hammerhead, can be legally fished off the Queensland and Northern Territory coasts in Australia. And it is estimated that this is an area hammerhead shark populations have declined by as much as 80%. Surely, this is something that could be changed fairly easily, so that they get the protection they deserve, at least in these waters. So, in my opinion, to be able to save these bizarre, fascinating creatures, all fishing of them needs to be made illegal, even in international waters, with very tough consequences to those that continue the barbaric practice of capturing and removing their fins for the feeding bowl. The Australian Marine Conservation Society has a really cool printable poster about scalloped hammerhead sharks that you can download. Just click the marineconservation.org website. It's the first one in the sources.